Assalamualaikum and hi. So this is the uh, video of chapter 2 heat transfer BMCG4743 one dimensional conduction. Okay, this is uh, the objectives of uh, this chapter. Okay, to understand the concept of thermal resistance and its limitation and develop thermal resistance network for practical heat conduction problems, soft steady conduction problem that involve multi-layer, rectangular, cylindrical or spherical geometries, develop an intuitive understanding of thermal contact resistance and circumstances under which it may be significant, identify application in which insulation may actually increase the transfer, analyze fin surface and assess how efficiently and effectively fin enhance heat transfer, solve multi-dimensional practical heat conduction problem using conduction shape factor. Okay, introduction. Okay, in this subject, we are interested in these two parameters, which is the temperature and also heat transfer. So, uh, as you can see, temperature is a scalar quantity, which it does not have any direction, just magnitude or value. Whereas heat transfer, it is a vector quantity because they have both, which is the direction and also magnitude. So as we all know in the uh, previous uh, slide or chapter, I already mentioned that um, heat is being transferred due to the temperature difference. But it is related, the temperature and heat transfer is related, but it has different uh, quantity. Okay, So the way heat is being transferred based on the temperature difference, so it has direction, but temperature does not have any direction. Okay, the driving force for any form of heat transfer is the temperature difference. Okay, if you have a certain body uh, or anything that has temperature difference, definitely there will be a heat transfer. So the larger the temperature difference, the larger the heat transfer rate. Okay, and uh, this uh, heat transfer is actually can be transferred through three prime coordinate system, which is the rectangular system from X, Y, Z, and T is the time. Syndical R psi Z direction. Okay, this is the rectangular coordinate, XYZ coordinates, normal coordinate that we've been using, and the second is cylindrical coordinate. Okay, we have X, Y, and also Z direction. Okay, X, uh, sorry, R radius and also theta and Z direction, and the last one is the spherical coordinates, which is T, R, psi, theta, and T. T here is time. Okay, since it transfer has a rate so it will also depend on times okay, another important uh, things that you need to know uh, I also already mentioned in the previous slide we have steady and also transient heat transfer okay steady implies no change with time at any point within the medium and transient implies that uh, it is a time dependence okay from uh, the heat transfer may vary from uh, 0 second to 5 second maybe from to, uh, at the 0 second the heat transfer is uh, 100, degree, 100 uh, watt, but after 5 hours, maybe the heat transfer will be, de will be increasing or decreasing. Okay, So that is the difference between steady and also transient. Steady does not change with time. Okay, Regardless how long it takes, the condition is, we assume it to be consistent or constant, but for transient, it will change with time. Okay, another thing that we need to know in the heat transfer also is about the lump system. Okay, there are two uh, things. For the lump system, uh, it has uh, almost uniform temperature throughout the body. Whereas for systems which are not lump, it will have different temperature uh, at the entire body. So, you, if you look at, at this example, we have a copper ball which has uh, 70 degrees Celsius throughout the body inside and outside from the surface to the inside but whereas for the roast beef okay some part of it has 40 degrees another is 90 and um, at the surface is 100 degrees celsius okay this uh the roast beef is not a lump system but the copper ball we can consider it as a lump system okay so um a lump system is normally um, a material that is consistent or it has high thermal conductivity because it can easily uh, raise or the, the temperature inside and outside of it is easily goes to the uh, equilibrium or at the same temperature compared to the roast beef some part of it will have high temperature and the other part will have a uh, lower temperature so this is the difference between lump system and also uh, a system that are not lump 
multi-dimensional heat transfer. Okay, in normal cases, heat transfer is being, uh, how to say, actually heat is being transferred in all direction, x, y, and z direction. So, but uh, in uh, for the uh, easiness of our analysis, normally we try to restrict our analysis to be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional. However, but in most cases, normally the heat is being transferred in all three directions. For the case of one dimensional, maybe we can uh, we will uh, neglect the heat transfer in the other direction. We just consider it to be in one direction, or we can also in the experimental setup we can put uh, insulation and we try to uh, set everything so that the heat will be transferred in one direction. And also same goes to the two dimensional. We just consider two dimensional of heat transfer. Two primary direction, maybe x, y, x and y, and the z direction, we can just neglect the uh, any heat transfer from the z direction. Okay, the, there are two example. Uh, figure 2.5, 25 is two dimensional heat transfer. As you can see, it is in the y direction. Okay, here is the y direction and x direction. So, two direction of heat, heat transfer. Since this side has 80 degrees and the other side has 60 degrees. And for this case, in the x direction, this side has 80 degrees and the other side has 60, 70 degrees Celsius. So heat will be transferred since since there is a temperature difference. So heat will be transferred in the x direction here yeah, and also y direction this way. Okay, another example we show here. Okay, figure 2.6. Okay, heat transfer through a window of a house can be taken to be one dimensional. Okay, so actually we we have uh, the heat transfer direction in the uh, how to say y direction. Okay, here y, and we assume this to be x direction. Okay, x, y, and we also actually have z direction. But since the temperature difference in the x direction is significant, so we can neglect the heat transfer in the y and z direction. We also can do that kind of thing. Or maybe we can just put insulator okay, in uh, other, other, other direction and uh, so that we can assume it to be in one direction. Okay. A steady heat conduction in plain wall. Okay, in uh, the heat transfer through the wall of a house can be modeled as steady and one dimensional. Okay, so this is for easiness of, of our analysis. We assume that the surface temperature of the inner this one, this area is we consider as inner, and we consider this area we consider it to be outer. So we just assume the surface of the outer surface is at a constant temperature, and the inner also has a constant temperature. Okay, so the uh, since we assume it to be something like this, so the heat transfer will be uh, in the one direction, which is from the inner to outer. Or we can we can say also it's in the x direction. Okay, so these are the energy balance equation. You can see here. Okay, rate of heat transfer into the wall minus rate of heat transfer out of the wall is equivalent to rate of change of the energy of the wall. So Q in minus Q out is equivalent to change of uh, energy of the wall over over dt over uh, throughout the time time. Okay, since it, this is a steady uh, state condition. Okay, so the E wall D E, which is the energy through the wall, energy change, rate of energy change of the wall over dt is equivalent to zero. So from this equation, the steady operation rate of transfer through the wall, we can just use the Fourier law of heat conduction, which is equivalent to minus Ka dt over dx. So um, under steady condition, the temperature division in a plain wall is straight line. Okay, dt dx is equivalent to constant. So since we use the Fourier law, okay, the temperature difference we, inside of this wall we assume it to be uh, straight line here. Yeah, does not have any curvature. Okay, so T1, T2, okay, the temperature difference is dt. Okay, over dx will have a constant value of k. So that's how we calculate the thermal conductivity. Okay, we um, area under the graph. Okay, this is all the equa related equation um, to the uh, Fourier law of conduction. Okay, 
So the rate of fit conduction through a plane wall is proportional to the average thermal conductivity, the wall area, and the temperature difference, but it's inversely proportional to the wall thickness. Okay, so the larger the wall thickness, the lower uh, the value of the uh, heat conduction. Okay, so once the rate of conduction is available, temperature Tx at any location x can be determined by replacing T2 by T1 and L by x. Okay, so it mentioned here, it will be used largely in uh, the rest of these uh, topics. So once we know this Q value, because it is a constant value, okay, so we will know the temperature at any position within this wall. Within this wall. Okay. We just need to change the value of x, delta x, and we can know the temperature of T1 and T2 or any value of temperature within this wall. Here, 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 or any position. So that is what it's mean by this uh, statement. Okay, thermal resistance concept. Okay, we already look, look into the uh, thermal conduction. Okay, so we have uh, thermal conductivity K. So now we look into the thermal resistance, which is the inverse of the conduction. So as you can see here, the definition here, conduction resistance of the wall. Okay, thermal conductivity is the conduction conductor, but for conduction resistance, it is thermal resistance of the wall against heat conduction. So it is in an inverse value of the K. So this is the equation that we can use to calculate the thermal resistance. R wall is equivalent to L over Ka, okay, which is an inverse of this value. Okay, L over K. Okay, K here is the thermal conductivity, A is the surface area, and L is the distance. Okay, so it is an inverse of this value. And you can rearrange this equation to be in the resistance form, to be something like that. Q conduction uh, through the wall is equivalent to T1 minus T2. Okay, T1 has higher temperature, T2 has lower temperature over R wall. R wall here is the wall resistance, which can be calculated from this equation. Okay, so the thermal resistance also depends on the geometry and the thermal properties of the medium. So the geometry here is the surface area and also length, L, and the thermal property is the thermal conductivities. Okay, so uh, another important thing of this thermal resistance concept, uh, actually the thermal resistance concept can be analogy, it has one-to-one uh, -one analogy with the electric resistance. Okay, so analogy with the thermal, res thermal resistance, electric resistance concept. We can just replace the rate of heat transfer with the electric current and thermal resistance with the electric resistance, temperature difference with the voltage. Okay, directly uh, change uh, by that and we can uh, do the thermal resistance network analysis or thermal resistance analysis. Okay, almost similar with the uh, electric resistance. Okay, Newton law of cooling. So in, in some cases, okay, before this, we look into the thermal resistance uh, within the wall. Uh, so from the conduction, okay, we also have uh, thermal resistance, okay, from the surface of the solid body to the surrounding, which is from this convection. This is the convection, uh, uh, from the uh, convection uh, mode of heat transfer, okay. So we have convection. So from the surface to the surrounding, we have a uh, convection coefficient. So this concept also, uh, we have this uh, convective resistance. Okay. So it mentioned here, convective resistance of the surface is the thermal resistance of the surface again heat convection. It also uh, is the inverse of the convection coefficient times the surface area here. Okay. You can see this is the convection coefficient times A, which is the surface area. And the thermal resistance for convection is R convection is equal to 1 over HAS. H here is the convection coefficient, AS is the surface area. So it is an inverse of uh, convection coefficient. Uh, 1 over HA, you will get the um, convection resistance. And you can rearrange this equation, convection equation, by uh, replace this R value. Uh, uh, sorry, by replace H value with R and 
will turn out to be something like this. Okay, so this is uh, the schematic uh, convection resistance at the surface. So normally we will draw uh, this kind of resistance to do the analysis of the heat transfer. Okay, thermal resistance network. Okay, uh, since this system is steady state, so the rate of heat convection into the wall is equivalent to the rate of heat conduction through the wall and it also equivalent to the rate of heat convection from the wall. So uh, from this con this idea, which is uh, we know that left side here has high temperature and right side has low temperature. Okay, from uh, this uh, equation, okay, we write this equation in the uh, heat flux equation. So Q dot is equivalent to T infinite 1 minus T1 over resistance of uh, convection uh, resistance okay convection resistance here from surrounding to surface the wall 1 and then conduction uh, resistance from the T1 to T2 here this is the equation and the temperature is T2 minus T1 minus T2 and then we have last is the convection here from the surface of this T2 to T infinite 2. So this is another convection. Okay, so <coughs> since this is a steady state, so Q here from the surround left surrounding temperature to the surface of the wall, the same as Q conduction inside this wall, and it's also the same as Q here. Okay, so we can write this equation to be something like this. And if we calculate the overall temperature, which is the T infinite 1 minus T infinite 2, so the, the resistance throughout this system is written as follow. Okay, this is the total resistance, uh, total heat flux throughout this system. So basically, the resistance throughout this wall can be just add up uh, because it is in series uh, position series position so it can be just adding up r convection one plus r convection wall plus r conduction wall plus r convection divided from uh, convection two so this kind of uh, things okay methods or the theory of uh, summation of the, the series is same with the electrical analogy Multi-layer plane wall. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, multi-layer wall. Okay, wall one and also wall two. Okay, if we uh, this is the left side and this is the right side. Okay, so the temperature drop from the left side to the right side. So left side has higher temperature compared to right side. So for this case, we need to add resistance for each of the wall here. Okay. So in this case, we have two uh, wall resistance and we have convection here from the left side surrounding to the wall one, surface of wall one. And we also have another convection here from the T3 to the surrounding of uh, right side. Okay, So we do the same analysis as the uh, 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 thermal resistance network which I showed you earlier. So the summation of uh, resistance is R, R convection 1 plus R wall 1, R wall 2 plus R convection 2. So this is the equation from the L and uh, from the conduction and also from the convection. So the summation of this, we can calculate the uh, total resistance throughout this multi-layer plane walls. So we already look into the thermal resistant uh, concept. We also already look into thermal resistant network. So now uh, is the summary of it. So the composite wall. Okay, let's say uh, we have uh, the wall of a building, a row of brick, an air gap, a second row of brick, cement, the outside surface. So this is one example. Let's say we have uh, a numbers of uh, layers of uh, wall. Okay, okay. This is wall one, two, three, to the T N wall. So we uh, all of this wall have different uh, thermal conductivities. Uh, so uh, 
uh, we can write the general equation uh, for this uh, composite wall actually so uh, by using the heat transfer analysis okay the concept of thermal resistance with the analogy of the electrical so we can draw this thermal resistance network uh, diagram okay q here is constant r1 ra here is the convection from fluid a and rb is convection from fluid b r1 to till rn is the uh, thermal resistance from the conduction uh, inside all this wall x1 till xn so from this equation which is uh, similar to the electrical analogy uh, which is from the conduction uh, this is the conduction equation and convection equation we can derive uh, general equation for these two uh, convection and conduction so conduction term resistant convection term resistant this is the uh, equation to calculate the conduction term resistant and conduct convection term resistant so from this T equation we can replace in the general equation here okay so can replace the resistance equation here into this type of equation and also this type of equation and we can get this uh, overall heat transfer oh sorry overall thermal resistance network throughout this system okay so basically this is the general, general equation for multi-layer wall so the Q is constant and you can just sum all the resistance uh, in the layers of the wall and you get uh, you can calculate the temperature from the temperature difference you can calculate everything so this is the general equation for the uh, composite wall with multi-layer wall uh, also known as the thermal resistance network okay, this is the end of part one for chapter two uh, thank you and hopefully help with your study